So let's start. Um, first picture I'm going to show you is the face of frustration. And uh, maybe uh, some of you have been frustrated behind the computer sometimes, like at least one time a day, I can assure you. And uh, I'm going to uh, give you some uh, tips how we can prevent people from being this frustrated in this presentation. So, uh, I don't know how many of you attended my session last year at GNB. Okay. It's some, yeah. Uh, anyway, my name is Emily Lindqvist. I'm uh, from Sweden, but I work in uh, Norway, in Oslo. Um, I worked there for three and a half years now. And I am um, actually uh, have a bachelor in industrial design, but um, I kind of in my third year with industrial des design, I felt like it wasn't really my calling. Um, so I started studying some graphic design. Um, but I have actually taken some points from um, the industrial kind of thinking. You know, if you design a chair. It has to be nice and comfortable to sit in, and it also has to be nice to look at. So I have tried to get that thinking into web applications and websites that I create. And the company I work for in Norway uh, is named Already On. So uh, my agenda for today is first I'm going to talk a bit about uh, my mission in this design world and then I'm going to go through some points why it's important to be user-friendly and then how we can achieve user-friendly web applications and then some of my inspiration and end with some questions. So my mission with web applications um, as an example here, I also took it up last year, it's um, people don't think alike. You can never get people to think the same. Uh, so, um, for example, here you see a designer that think in, in pictures and colors, and you see a, a marketing director thinking everything is about money, or a developer thinks everything cold. It's just a generalization, but, but anyway. Um, but my answer to this is, let's not make them think. Or, stop thinking, start working. Because um, web application, you shouldn't sit there and think, oh, where should I do this and how should I do this? It should just be working. So that's actually um, our key to to web applications and it's um, a really important sales argument for us when we sell our pro um, projects. Um, it's actually one of, yeah, as I said, one of the key things we do. So, um, why should we be user friendly? How many of you is uh, designers? Some? And some developers also maybe? I think it's important for both uh, designers and uh, developers and I think every people in the project should think about uh, usability and to be user friendly. So why be user friendly? The first argument is it's more efficient to use application that is user friendly and it takes less time to accomplish a particular task or action in the user friendly environment and as we all know time is money. 
Number two is it's easier to learn. Um, operation can be learned by observing and uh, no extreme manual needed. Um, actually, at customers, I've seen people have maybe not this big of a manual, but um, something like it. Big manual, and when they are going to do some something in their system, they take this and just, okay, let's see. And it's not like they have done it before. Yes, they do it every month, but it doesn't matter. They still have to go every month to that manual to see. And that, that's for me, isn't user-friendly. And um, three, a third argument is it's more satisfying to use. And you get happy users, customer, and a happy world. So what can be better? <laughs> Everyone wants to be happier. So um, how? How can we make it more, more efficient to use uh, application? Or uh, it can be application, it can be a website or a yeah, portal of some sort. So um, I'm sure some of you heard this, uh, heard this, fewer clicks to solve daily tasks. It's like when you do something often, you don't want to have to click eight times in different uh, menus to find this function because it's something you do and need to find easy. So I have example. Um, I have done the usability on a member system and uh, worked a lot with usability on this, uh, this uh, project. So this is just an example from, from the system and uh, some of the Examples that we have that is you get the listing instant when you log in the system. Search, you don't have to even click in the search field. You start in the search field. You can just type the name and the list updates automatically. So no click and still I got maybe the member or the person I'm searching for. Um, so the member, um, basic member information I get in the listing because I have a, asked what information is it that you are looking for when you log in the system. Yes, it is what status does this member have. And you see that instantly in the listing and don't even have to click on the member. Um, and find the member details. It's one click, you have to click on the member and then you get the member contact card and can see all the information. Um, exports, you see the uh, icons. Up to the right from the listing, you can with one click just export to two different um, different formats. Um, filtering, add member, resign member, log in as a member. Yeah, you see, you get the list. Um, so you can say, yeah, it's really important to to know what information should be close, but then. It can be more efficient to use by adding more clicks also, because um, there are some, some uh, part of the system, something you maybe don't do daily, that you don't, uh, or you need to, you have a process. For example, when you are going to uh, send a newsletter, you need to first find find out which group you're going to send the newsletter to, then you're going to write and maybe add pictures to the newsletter, and then maybe you want to see and edit the list of the people you're sending to, and then pick if you want to send it yeah, by email and what day. So then you can, it can be efficient to use more clicks also. So it's, it's um, what I've come up with is that uh, clicks are not always important. Um, time saving can be achieved in many ways. So, uh, but it's always important to think about that daily task, the things that you do often, that that should be fewer clicks. And if it's a more complicated operations, or if it's something that's a secondary function, you can uh, hide it a bit. Or well, that's my conclusion, anyway. So, uh, more efficient to use. <laughs> this is an uh, example. Two logic ways are better than thousands of choices. So, which, which sign do you prefer? <laughs> or, another example is a Norwegian website, Statoil. 
they have this huge menu, so on every mouse over menu item you get this drop down menu with like 30 menu items. And to compare that to something like MailChimp that have, what is it, like seven base menu eight items? Or the last one. Where do you want to drive? <laughs> Depends on where the road's going. Yeah, that's 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 true. But say you were uh, you were going just straight forward. <laughs> yeah, it's just an example. So um, the third um, thing is that overview is power. Just a small little. Uh, that's what you can achieve with, with great um, usability to, to get people to have a really great overview, to know um, where they are going. Here's an example of, um, of an overview. Um, I try to always have illustration as well as uh, text and listings in my overviews so that you can um, you can see picture or you can read text, you can see icons, because if it's only text or only pictures, yeah, it's harder to, uh, to get the whole picture. But then, of course, it's important to know what information is important to, to the user to see. This is an example from, um, we've done a system called CMOSYS, and it's um, a system for knowing how much a lot of big, uh, big companies in, in Norway as well, they have to report how much CO2 they let out. So they have to report every year how much they do. And all the um, applications that I have seen in this um, particular area is, um, is so technical. It's, uh, so they don't use colors, they don't use things like that. So I've tried to make it, yeah, make a really, technical and uh, you can say um, report system, getting that a bit easier to comprehend. Yes, um, one more example from, from SHU, the member system I was talking about. Sorry, everything is in Norwegian, but if you want to ask. Um, one thing I also think is important is to hide unnecessary necessary things. It's, it's a lot of, of things you can hide but can still be there. You can use, I mean today there are so much new technology to, um, to help you like uh, Ajax, HTML5, yeah, everything. So just an example of things or features that are hide, hided in that basic view. Um, if you see on this picture you have uh, in the tab menu, in the top, you have an icon that are that are gray. It's the icon for resigning a member, and it's gray because you can't just click resign without clicking a member. So when you have clicked the member, the icon gets what you say activated, and you can click it. And uh, you also have a tooltip if you don't have. If you haven't picked a member, so you get the message that you have to choose a member to resign to click this button. And you have the um, exports in the right corner, I talked about them before. And um, you can actually see what's export and what's actions, because you can customize this list for your user. There's also a thing that's I believe is um, more and more important is to be able to customize um, the view for different kind of users in the same system. Uh, you have icons for a person's roles and it can be that the person is a board member as in the this example and on mouse over you can see that you can see that it's a board member, but after using the system for, I don't know, but a couple of weeks, you know the different icons and what they mean, so you don't have to use the tooltip. But still, users that are new to the system can have 
a great value in this um, tooltip. Mm. You also have a, high, a, s a filtering to, to the right, if you see it's uh, there, a small frame. And here you can uh, see the, the filtering to be able to, to filter the list on different, uh, different choices and then save the filters and, and so on. Uh, if you, you can also see on this sketch that I use um, colors, but that was something we saw actually from the presentation about the uh, bootstrap, that you use green if it's something active or something is successful and if it's more information type you use blue and if it's uh, an error or something uh, isn't working it's it's red so I try to use those color through the system so uh, more efficient to use find the user um, in most cases I have both customers and I have users. Sometimes the customer is the user, sometimes the customer is some of the users, but they have a lot of more users that never get involved in the project. And, uh, and sometimes the customer uh, is just have their own uh, have their own customers that are the user. So, uh, but it's important to find this user and or finding these different types because uh, you want to know some things about them. So, uh, for example, you need to know who are you and what are you doing here. Uh, it can be, for example, it's an important question also for, for a website to just sit down and think, why do people go to my web page? Um, why are they there? And who are they? And do you hang here often? Are you here often? Is it uh, to be able to see what the focus for this user is? You have to know how often this person is actually uh, using this uh, program or visiting this web page. Because if it's a person that's often there, uh, it's easier to, uh, if you have functionality, for example, um, that are a bit hidden, and if it's only used by users that are there often, it's fine because they have learned where to find it. But if it's um, something that is important for users that are there only once a month, it's important that it's really highlighted so that they can find it easily. And uh, one other thing is uh, what will make you come back? And do you like it here? Why? Why not? And can I make it better for you? This is a really good question if, you, if you're dating someone as well. So you can just note them down. Can be used all over. So, um, the second point I said, uh, why usability was easier to learn. And easier to learn has to do with a lot of things, but one of them is it's, you should have more than one way to uh, the same destination. Here's an example from Google Maps. When I wrote from Oslo to Frankfurt, I got three ways different directions. Um, and I think it's the same with, uh, with the user. As I told from the beginning, um, they don't think alike. You can never get your users or visitors on a web page to think alike. They don't do that. Yeah, I've tried, but it's impossible. So therefore, you have to uh, give them more than one way. So uh, one more example from this uh, member system. To create a member in this member system, there are four different ways. And uh, it's not only four different places, it's four different ways. So it's like hundreds of different places because you can do it from the member overview, you can do it for, uh, from a member list on all districts and all local teams. So if it's a good big organization that have hundreds of local teams, you cannot on each local team add members. Um, you can do it from a web page, from a register form, or you can do it from a, a my page for a region. Uh, and this is because 
someday you're sitting there and you sit in the member overview and maybe, yeah, I want to add a member, yeah, let's do it from here, I see the button here. Or otherwise you're thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm working with this um, local team, it's new now, so now I want to add all the new members in this local team and you can do it, do it from there. So it's important to know all the different ways. Yes. I uh, think another thing with this uh, more than one way to, to the same des destination has to do with, uh, with building uh, links. Um, is, um, for example, we try to link as many things as possible in an application, a um, web application. For example, if you have an overview and you see a name of, say, a district, and you see that the district have 20 local teams, and you see that they have 200 members. And if you want to see all those members, yeah, okay. For me, maybe it's most logic to just click on the district and go and see where I can find the members there. Uh, but then you have a lot of options. You can, for example, click on the list, on the number, and you get instantly there. Uh, it's also important to highlight links you have because um, if they're not highlighted in some way, uh, people don't know they can click it. Um, sometimes, yeah, you think it's bold or underlined is enough, but I found it more import um, important to also have some kind of icon uh, because people uh, are really, yeah. And they're really getting used to, if you have one icon that shows its link in the whole system, they learn that they can click that very easily. Yes. So, the third is satisfying to use. Give the user something more. Uh, I don't know, do you have any suggestions what you can give a user that's something, something more? Anyone? I can take some examples and maybe you have some more. I found this sign up form. And uh, of course it's, it's really great to know if you have filled in a field correctly. I talked about this uh, in my last talk that it's important to get instant response when you fill in a field and to know that it's correctly filled in. You can also use, and that's really a great thing, is to use example data. For example, in an email field you write name at your email. <laughs> dot com or something, so uh, it's also making the user uh, more responsive. And um, I always try to, when you have a registered form, that it's instantly, when you only move one field, you see that uh, you haven't filled the uh, one before correctly, because uh, one of the most frustrating things for me when I fill out something on the web is when I uh, click next and then get all this red and have to go back and fill everything in. So, and here you see also use of this green color, but here they have done something more. They've actually given you, yeah, it's quite funny if you read it. Mm. Another example is, I don't know how many of you have a Gmail, Gmail account, yeah? Uh, it's actually, this is Norwegian, but I can explain it in, in English. When you write, yeah, see the attach field or see the attachment, and then don't attach a file, you actually get a pop-up that says, you didn't attach a file. Do you want to send this email anyway, or do you want to go back and attach the file? I think that mom, one of the most um, common mistakes people do when sending emails is to not attach the document. So there they have actually given the user something more. This is just an example I found on the web. Uh, it's just a bit of, of, uh, of how we can make um, applications um, more satisfying to use. Of course you can't have this, but um, I want to read my boss's mind, but I can't. Extend deadline, anyone wants to do that? 
Um, yes. Yes, and um, then I'm going to talk a bit about my inspiration because I think uh, it's important to to come to places like G and Beyond and to talk a bit about what you have experienced and also where you find inspiration and where you learn things. And uh, one of my inspiration is, have you heard of Smashing? Smashing Magazine? They have uh, e-books and I have read so many books about usability and a lot of them is actually, yeah, they are very boring. They just, I don't know, maybe they haven't read what they are writing because it's just, <laughs> it's just text and no pictures and it's just blah 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 do this and do this and, and what I try to find is to find inspiration where it's easy to understand where you can uh, understand it directly and get inspiration from it and I found out that uh, the ebooks for from Smashing Magazine they are really really great and they're easy to to read and um, you can like read one chapter and then skip another or take one book and read a bit in that and yeah whatever. No, they have uh, they have a lot of pictures and examples, and uh, they uh, write a lot about um, psychology connected to uh, uh, to usability, actually, and also a bit about usability texting uh, testing. Last time um, when I was here in GML, I talked a lot about this uh, testing that it doesn't have to be that difficult that you actually can sit, sit down a person in front of your computer with just a Photoshop sketch and say, okay, can you just look at this and tell me how do you do this? And they can just tell you and you instantly have done a small test. And um, also another thing um, that I found out is even if uh, it's good to to use your uh, your network to to just ask a friend, but it's uh, even better to ask someone in your family because actually friends in the same age as you or whatever, or they know IT and they they like think a bit like yourself. So then you're just getting the answers you want to have. But if you, for example, sit down with, I don't know, your dad or uh, someone older in the family, you get whole different answers. So it's important to, to find the people that maybe isn't the obvious person, but to help you. Um, and you don't have to film it or whatever. You can just take some notes and take some uh, like showing them some web page and say, what do you think this is about? What's your first impression? And um, another inspiration that I talked about last time was uh, Steve Krug, and he has written two books. One is Don't Make Me Think, that I think is really a great book. It's uh, getting a bit old now, but they it still have have their things. It's it's about you know that you don't have to, you shouldn't be able to, to think when you, when you use an application or, um, or is on a web page. You should see exactly where you're going and what you're doing instantly. Um, so that's a good book. And then he also have uh, written a book about usability testing. Um, that is, yeah, it, it is interesting, but I think you can even make it easier than that. I think to only have sketches and ask those simple questions is uh, is key and the, and then make up some scenarios tell the user to do something for example if you have a, a web page that are selling something say ah if you wanted to know how much this cost where what where would you go or if you wanted to answer how how long would it take to get this to your home, where would you look for that information? To to set up some scenarios and then just don't tell the person anymore. Just let them uh, tell you what they are going to do and try to get them to speak as much as possible because sometimes they just start to click. But if you only have pictures, that <laughs> won't be uh, they won't be able to do that. But then you can just ask where, how are you thinking? 
and the process. And then, of course, there are a lot of things like, yeah, you should have the search field in the top right, you should have a menu item, shouldn't have more than seven items in a menu, and um, there are a lot of those uh, uh, rules you should be easy to find contact information and all that. And of course, they are important, and you know, how much space it should be between every line in the written text, but even though I think that more and more, and also with this uh, that they talked about fitted bootstrap, um, it's it's getting there that everyone knows those rules and they are actually applying them. So so now it's more about what I talked about before to give the to actually give the user something something more. I don't know if you've heard, but um, or you're using um, this. What's the monkey? <laughs> Mailchimp, yeah. He's he's saying all things sometimes, and like, have you heard this banana song? And then he like links a banana song on uh, to YouTube. Yeah, for some people it can be annoying, but I think uh, they have also thought about to give the user something more to not because everyone is getting more and more eager to to find that thing that's a little bit better because. Um, and I'm happy for it. Applications and web um, sites are getting much better in the usability area, and and uh, therefore we have to uh, give the user even more these days than we had to say two years ago, even even six months ago. They are expecting more. And if you see on um, on daily applications like Facebook or Twitter, they do updates all the time because that's what the user expect. They expect it to improve. Uh, and I also think that it's important to, when you have a web page or when you have an application, to not be satisfied, to, to never satisfy, to always uh, say, okay, uh, at least once every six months, I'm going to sit down and see what I can improve. Uh, look at some statistic, take in some new person that, that tests something and look what's, uh, what's new with technology and how can we implement it on our site to help our users. Um, yes. So uh, back to the <laughs> frustrated phases. So uh, I think that um, together with those uh, three steps and uh, with, the, with the power, I think we can make them. I would love my users to, to look and feel like this when they use an application or a website. Maybe not to have a duck. But uh, yeah, it's not important. Do you see Obama? He, he looks so satisfied there. So that's actually what, what I've strived to. I, um, you should always strive to something that's almost impossible because even if you're not getting there, you at least go in the right direction. So I think actually that was all for me. I maybe talked a bit fast. I don't know, but maybe you have some questions. Uh, it's not a question. I, I wanted to mention, uh, uh, you mentioned um, uh, user testing and using your family. Um, I actually found that it's not a good thing because a lot of times they don't tend to be too honest or, or if they see something they just assume you know to not you know they, they don't want to hurt your feelings or they don't want so they're just I, I haven't found it to be uh, a great source of user testing. Um, I discovered this and I, I, I don't work for them or you know, but I discovered a service called uh, usertesting.com. I don't know if you're familiar with it. And it's uh, pretty cheap and they basically you can ask, you know, if a uh, male, female, age, um, different, um, uh, uh, you know, levels of knowledge in, in, in browsing or web and you basically give them a list of tasks to do and they'll actually record it on video and they'll actually talk as they do the, uh, the, the tasks. And when you see that, it's it's amazing. I mean, it, you learn so much. So I would, it's something that I would recommend for people to check out. Usertesting.com. Uh, I've I've learned in you know just five. I do like sets of five because uh, that's enough. And I learned so much stuff from it uh, uh, that it's uh, you know very good investment. It's, it's relatively cheap too. So. Uh, 
uh, uh, normally if you go on their website, it's, I think it's about $30 per test. Uh, and it, it lasts about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the, you know, there's like four big tasks, and then they do a report at the end. Uh, but I found a trick. If you go to appsumo.com, uh, they sell five tests for $99. And they keep saying that it's, uh, uh, the offer expires in, you know, a couple of days, but it's, it, it's always been on. <laughs> it's, been, it's been on for a year, so you can just go through, through appsumo.com and you save, you know, quite a lot of money, almost, you know, half, half price. So. Yeah, appsumo.com. Um, they're not cheap, you know, they, they, they do like bundles and they send you, you know. So, appsumo.com, do search, search for user testing and it should come up. But otherwise, it's $30. It's, it's, it's very good investment. It's also a really great thing. And uh, I can agree, it can be a bit difficult with. Uh, with uh, with family, but uh, I said that um, it's important you find someone to do the testing instead of using no one. But of course, it's better to find something someone that can give better criticism. I guess I just wanted to add to that. We do a lot of user testing, user user testing too, and you really have to be careful about how you ask the questions because if you ask the question improperly, you're getting you may get an unbiased response. Uh, another thing, if you're going to do user testing, is Five tests is the, you know, usually the good, the number they say is ideal for getting a good enough cross section where you're not getting too many but not too little. Uh, savvy Panda Company, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, um, actually the meaning of this presentation was just to, to, get people to think more about uh, usability and to inspire you to think more about it and I'm happy to to talk with all of you about this because this is something I really yeah learn for any more questions or finished so thank you very much <laughs> <laughs>